<laughs> Should I stand over here? Or do you want me However to stand over there? However you feel. That one's kind of crappy. The one up there? Yeah. Um, you can't see as well as on this one, so it's up to you. Yeah, as long as I'm not in your way, and if I am, just say so. No, you're completely fine. I'll let you know. I'm looking at the intracranial structures right now. The noggin. Yes, I got cream. I'm sorry, I just like being a smart ass. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Last time we did job. this, he was on his head the entire time. Yeah, it sits down still. Mm -hmm. Did I see a hand? Yeah, you might see little hands come up next to its head there. Oh, did you see that? Mm-hmm. Is it the first time we can tell if he has a big head or not? Uh, he's going to have an enormous head. I told you I poor guy. Yeah, <laughs> I, got a, I got a 7, 7, 8 <laughs> inch hat size, so. What? Oh yeah. my god. 7, 7, 8. See, might as well pass it on to your kid, huh? <laughs> I mean, look at her. Good lord, right? Let's <laughs> 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 at least be about sense of humor. <laughs> well, you know, you've got to. There's no use not. He's putting his head back in here. I like how we're all calling him him. Because it is him. <laughs> Better be She's right. been saying it since we first found out. He, he. Well, yeah, well, since we first found out we were pregnant, yeah, before we even got mm -hmm. sent he. What do you, this is your first child too, Dad? Mm-hmm. And uh, what does your dad have? Uh, we're mostly boys. You're, he has all boys? Yeah. Oh, Except for one. So. Yeah, we, I've got one sister, but uh, four brothers. Well, there you go, Mom. So I mm. hope you never want a girl. <laughs> you really enjoy. Come on, baby. He's tilting his head back. <laughs> he was a troublemaker last time. Oh, was he really? Yeah. Okay, good. It's good to know. It's not just Trying me. to rearrange him to see if he is. Uh, where he is. Yeah. Uh, oh. So much bigger. Yeah, he's so much bigger. Oh yeah, last time you guys saw him, he was a little peanut, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I was at what, like 12 weeks, something like that. Yeah. 13 weeks, yeah. So we're gonna have to battle it out today, and he this baby. <laughs> he's he's a little struggler. You know. This is my own thing. Is that an arm or a leg? That's the humerus. That's just the little shoulder bone here. Now we have less room to wiggle them, but he has been. I've been feeling it a little harder. I sit in an uncomfortable position for him. He's like, move! Get his face somewhere. He's like, no, <laughs> no pictures. Actually, both of his hands are in front of his face. There's his fingers up. Looks up here is his right hand. 
And then there's his left hand kind of balled up. There's his right eye, a little bit of his nasal structure. The eye's right here, but the hand's right on top of it. Kind of like, ugh. Face problem. Clearly, he's moving in the worst ways. That's funny. Such a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. Let me guys take that for dad. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, he's your dad doing was going to say it about mom. <laughs> Baby's doing it to be contrary. Just I like being contrary. Apparently, so does Baby. It's no fun. Any other way. Careful what you wish for, Dad. Oh, that's fine. 16 likes to be contrary. <laughs> Such a good trouble. That was the rib cage right there. Right. Yeah, you can see some of it coming in and out there. That's super cool to see it. It's always better seeing it live than pictures. Oh, yeah. They do crazy stuff in there. His head's tilted back, trying to get his little profile of nose and lips, but you see his head mm-hmm. is back in here, and then his little nose is in the air here. He's going to have my nose. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to wait to find that one out. That's a little hard. Does it have, can you hear it? We don't listen to it here, but when you have your doctor's appointment, they listen to it there. Mm. That means it's good. This is a little femurly. A little leg of the thigh bone. Yeah, he's a little bit bigger now, so it's hard to get his whole body in one shot. That's really neat. Like, why? What are you doing this for? 
he usually doesn't start moving around until after I eat breakfast. Did you eat breakfast this morning? I had a little bit, but... Not Gotta have at least something. Yeah. Um, something a little more substantial in another hour or two. That is neat. What was that? Was that a the harpy? Mm -hmm. Trying to get the little chambers here. Maybe I'll sit still. This is like right before the skin starts getting thicker, right? Um, actually everything's already there. It's just developing. Really thrashing around. <laughs> Not too happy. <laughs> Sorry, baby. I see you. <laughs> I know you'll find a great caption for this to go on his Facebook page. He was so excited he made this little kid his own Facebook page. Are you serious? Is that when he's old enough to use Facebook, we just give him his email and password. Okay, and he'll be able to look at his own literal timeline. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. Oh, wow. He's this excited about these I say. <laughs> I don't know. Facebook's a little <laughs> too involved mm -hmm. for me. They're a little, a little too much. Well, the only friends he's got right now are his family, so... <laughs> These are good for now, so the yeah. girls start getting on there. We'll let them get a hold of the internet at like 12. <laughs> Untethered. Untethered, yes. Because you can't, you know, block them away from it entirely these days, but... You can net net it. Well, you can, you can do a lot of things, and, and a lot of it's, you know, up to parental responsibility. Well, and there you said it. Keeping an eye out and just being aware of what's going on, being no active. Doors closed, no yeah. Computer, yeah. <laughs> computer at the table. <laughs> Let me put it this way: I didn't have my own computer in my bedroom till I was 16, 17, something like that. And that's about right. Then it's in whatever, basically. It's like goodness gracious. At no, that point, is, is that you've pretty much been raised. That is... No, that's baby's tummy. I want to get a good four chambers of the heart. It would be such a fast mover. Mm -hmm. I keep getting like limited views of it. Yeah, I think we got a runner. Yeah. <clears throat> One you'll have to like rivet to the chair in order to keep him sitting down. Mm -hmm. No, you take him into the park and then that's all they want to do is <laughs> sit down. Okay. Wear them out, yeah. That's what my mom always did. Take him to McDonald's play place. Oh yeah, go knock yourself out. In four hours, I don't have to see whether or not you're... And they have such cool play. places now, like those um, jungle gym places. And oh like the yeah. the jumper places, they're so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when they first started putting those little play areas in the McDonald's and Carl's Juniors. God, when I was a kid, they didn't have any of that. How old are you? I'm um, 28. Yeah, I've been, you know, yeah, it's just, it's right around the time when I, you know, I was real little. They, when I was just to the point where I was 
starting to outgrow that kind of a thing, that's when they started adding it. I'm saying like, oh, why didn't they have this stuff when I was a kid? Come on. You know what freaks me out are those ball pens, though. <laughs> yeah. I just wonder what I was on Get the bottom lost of that. In there, yeah. What's in there and when's the last time they cleaned it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How many drooling other kids have been in there? Or the kids, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like I think I just want I want my kid to grow up with a playground on a park that actually has one of those merry-go-rounds because they replaced all the sand with wood chips. And everything's all plastic, which gets just as hot in the summer, just as hot as metal. It's uh, safer if you go colliding headlong into it. It'll be less likely to hurt you. It's it's liability that sort of no, stuff. No, but when we were growing up, we didn't have to have the things around us safety proof. We were just you got hurt and you learned. I know, but now people are still freaked out. Let's see, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. One of the primary functions of how we learn is fire hot. <laughs> yes, I'm fire hot. Boy, still too. <laughs> this is diaper changing position. This is baby's right butt cheek. This is baby's left butt cheek. <laughs> you can see a little bit of the femur come across here. Yeah. And this is what we're looking at here. I see a little bit of the cord coming out here, so it's not the cord. So we're still thinking, boy, yeah, then. I'm still with, I'm trying to get a clearer shot if he would sit still. Look at those little feet. Oh, those are little feet. <laughs> you guys are crazy, baby. Yeah. Oh. Hey, he was giving uh, the other gal a hard time when she was trying to get him to uh, sit still long enough. And that was when he was small. He was just literally just on his head, just bouncing right yeah. on his head. She's like a pogo stick. I bet you Betty was mad too, huh? She's like, what? She's like, she kept sitting there like, wow, this guy's a little stinker. That's so awesome they can do this nowadays. It's so cool. With uh, my little sister, my mom had a gestational diabetes. Oh, okay. And at the time, that's pretty much the only reason why they would do ultrasounds. Cause they, to watch that baby's grow. Yeah. Baby's so I mean, I remember back when they had the ultrasound devices were like these giant monstrous Duma hickeys, and the machine was at least three times the size, at least three times Still the size. The it was unbelievable. Oh, there you go. It's really blurred because he's moving so fast, but it's definitely here's little testicles right here, and here's little penis coming out here. So I'll take this one just in case he doesn't give us any better pictures. It's boy. <laughs> And again, it's a diaper changing position. There's butt mm -hmm. cheek, butt cheek. Can you see the little brighter lines? These are the bones right there. Those little femurs. I see what position he's in now. So, like, That's if you were to grab his legs and go up like this. And his little legs are in the air, so gravity pulls, so his little testicles are pulling forward. See, there's a little better one again. Nice. So this first grandbaby too? Uh, for my mom, oh, yeah. No, get His, ready. Yeah. They turn into mm -hmm. these people like, I don't even know where they come from. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> don't even buy the first Halloween outfit. Don't buy the first Christmas because they get all offended. And, oh, my grandchild, how could you do this to me? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, you don't even know these people. The people there today are not the people they will know in a year from now. <laughs> Who are you people? Well, he's going to be born around time for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Cool. So, Christmas is probably going to be full of little tiny baby things. Yeah, and it's so funny because they could care less about it. Yeah. <laughs> just let them play with the styrofoam peanuts. They'll be fine. Pretty much. Just give them the boxes of all your guys' gifts. They'll be good. <laughs> Make, make a fort. <laughs> perfectly fine. Okay, baby. You're really making me work for it today. He gets his money's worth. Look at his butt. <laughs> See his butt? Here's his little butt cheek. There's his knee, and it comes up. There's his heel and his butt. He has some big feet. Daddy got size 13. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> she loves a basketball player. Yeah, but I'm tall and she's short, so I think he's probably going to be average. 
With huge feet and a big head. Um, poor guy. I know, poor guy, right? He's going to get the worst uh, of both worlds. Walking bobble, ginormous forehead. And they have big heads when they're big, when they're little like that anyways. And their heads are so never like... even out. Yeah, it's just like so awkward from their body. You feel so bad for them because they just topple over and it's always like head first. Because yeah. I think for me, well, he's big all around. Big shoulders, big chest. Me, if I was like a normal weight... If I was like 130, I would look like a bobblehead because I am short and I would be thin and, and I would your head is huge. still have a huge head. <laughs> the stuff we worry about before our kids come. <laughs> well, it's funny because the thing we're not worried about is his name, which is the most unique name I've so ever heard. So what name are you guys doing? Og Percival. What? It's biblical. Never heard of it. Og is Hebrew for um, giant. I like that. Giant. Really? Yeah, it's Hebrew for giant. And apparently, uh, like a side story or, or an alternate story for Noah's Ark, Og, the last of the giants, actually helped Noah build the Ark and then rode atop it. Really? How That's awesome what the is Muslims that? think, yeah, yeah. They think that uh, Og literally rode atop of the Ark because he was too big to fit inside. Really? I've never heard of that. So mm -hmm. is that like, is this your guys' religion based? No, just He's because. An, a it's just a story that you guys know. since he was like eight. And then his brother was like, oh, but Og has all these terrible names. I've never heard of it, so I wouldn't even worry Yeah, about. according to the uh, census, it's uh, only been given to probably like maybe a dozen people in the last 100 years or so. Like that about unique. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, never heard of that. there's an author in the early 1900s that was named Og. There's a Brazilian skateboarder named Og. Mm -hmm. like and I think that's pretty much it as far as anybody who's noteworthy. And you guys would be like the only people in Arizona. Mm -hmm. More or less. Probably. But that's good, though, because yeah. you know, sometimes you go to the schools and all the kids have the same kind of name. Yeah, it's like I've known at least five other Laura Marie's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My my older brother, we call him Michael. You can mm -hmm. imagine how often you get Mike or Mikey or whatever, so. Yeah, and, and you can't really have, you know, any names to, to pick on him with unless he's, like, fat, and then it's like, oh, the hog. I but I think, think she's thinking else. too hard, though. She's actually trying to come up with reasons no, why other have kids to, could. Though, because then, like you know, when they get older, you'd be like, "Why didn't I think of that?" Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of people do that, and I can only come up with two names, so that's that's pretty good. Well, I've always liked the name Eve. I think you already know what's going to happen to that poor kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like for Evie, because you know they're like so little tiny, and they're so cute. <laughs> they're like I love Eve, but then I'm like, yeah, it's not happening. Yeah. What was the one that we were going to name Blythe, if it was a girl? That's a cute Blythe. Blythe. That's even nice for a boy name, too. I'm sure it could be unisex. Yeah, it, with the way we work it is if it was a boy, I choose the first name, she chooses a middle name. If it's a girl, she chooses first name, and I choose a middle name. So if she wanted to go with Blythe, and if it was a girl, I would have gone with uh, Persephone for a second name. I like that one. You guys have cool names. Yeah, yeah Persephone's really awesome because it actually means uh, essentially manslayer. And... The, so he's you know, be hey. that kind of dad. Don't you touch my You're gonna have to. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, these, this era that we live in nowadays. Like when we were little, I'm like around your guys' age. I'm a little bit older, but um, you know, we played in the streets and how it was dark, and we never worried about like getting snatched up. Mm -hmm. Like, like it was just a day. You went to school and you actually played, and you were 12, yeah. and like kids talked about like I have a crush on a boy, not like I'm actually dating and yeah. you know, doing it with a boy. Yeah, mm -hmm. you you weren't worried about them getting pregnant at 12, 13 years old. No, and it's just my son's 11, and it just makes me so bummed because I don't even let him go outside by himself, you know? Because I'm just so you like, God, I watch too much Nancy Grace. Like, Why didn't you watch your son? He was 30 feet from the house. <laughs> <laughs> And can you imagine living with that for the rest of your life, yeah. you know? So it's, it's just always, horrible. I mean, like, sure, kids like to play by themselves, but, I mean, our problem is we're probably going to homeschool. Our problem is definitely That's not a problem. That's amazing that you guys do that. No, you guys, there's a lot of people like you out there. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to try as hard as we can, because, like, my dad works at home, my brother works at home. Uh, in a couple I of weeks, she works at home. I'll be able to work at home in the next couple, two or three weeks, so... You know what you guys really should, because what they're doing to our kids in these schools, and what they're teaching our kids is crap, and they're yeah. brainwashing them. The they, GED... They're just not even totally really trying. For what it is... I mean, they, I literally had pictures of, like, animal skulls. Which one goes where? It's like, that's You're obvious. kidding me. It was just so easy, so... Yeah, let me put it this way. I, um... I was homeschooled since third grade, so I went to third grade in regular school, and then from fourth on, because I, I threw out my back and was in a brace for about a year, oh. 
So I liked it so much being at home that we decided after I got better and everything that it was time to just go on ahead and stay home. So I stayed homeschooled, GED'd out at 16. The thing was is uh, my mom has only a seventh grade education. So she taught me up to the point where she couldn't do it anymore, and she basically said, here's a bunch of GED books, have at it. Do it, do it yourself. So uh, at 13, I started going through those books and whatnot. By the time I was 16 and actually went down, to, which is the earliest you can do it in Arizona, I actually went down, took that test. I was so overprepared, it wasn't even funny. In just three years, they had dumbed the test down to the point where I probably could have actually taken it at 12 and 13 and gotten through it without any problems at all. It was, it was disturbing how easy the test actually was. Well, of course, because then another dummy won't make it. Yeah, and, and Laura's like five and a half years younger than I am, so uh, when she took her GED, it was even worse. Yeah, I got mine in, what was it, Well, I've never really been, like, I really never knew much about homeschooling, but I'm a huge, like, Glenn Beck fan, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's always talking about the homeschooling and how, you know, how the stuff that... Um, and the people will call into the show and be like, yeah, you know, like their teachers and like, look at the books they're giving us to teach our students. And they're like essentially brainwashing our kids. Like you can't live without the government. You can't do anything on your own, taking your entrepreneurial spirit, taking away like parts of our American history. Like that's who we are. Yeah. Like, and they do are. whitewash We're inventors. a lot of history. Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry. I'm going to school to learn what actually happened, not necessarily what they choose to teach us. Yeah, good lord. I, I want my kid knowing what actually happens as compared. And I was so mad when they did that stupid thing when Obama did that speech at the school. Yeah, I called the school. I was like, are you guys doing it at the school? Because he ain't coming in today. I don't need no brainwashing. We're not in China. <laughs> like, I'll take care of the brainwashing. Oh yeah? Okay. You just mind your business. Yeah, because morals and things like that are something, are on the job of the parents. Morals. Schools are for, you know, Learning. reading, writing, arithmetic. They're not for you know, moral standing. Moral standing is something that... they're not doing that anymore. Like, he was in a charter school, and um, they were just teaching him to take an Ames test. That's all they were doing. He was so behind, I had no idea. But making A's and B's, I had no idea how far behind he was. I was so sad. Well, now in A and B nowadays, you know, back when we were children, good Lord, that would have been like a, a D, easy, probably worse. Mm -hmm. You'd be failing straight up. And the biggest thing is, is that, at least for me, is... My kid's going to read, and he's going to like reading. Oh, yeah. There's so many, no reading anymore. Even people my own age, it's like TV's taken away all your imagination. Everything's got to be thought out and drawn out. She reads so good. It's it's disturbing. When we're going through, like, all of the, uh, the like, funny websites on the Internet, I just let her read it all out loud because mm -hmm. I just can't keep up. Yeah, and I, and I think I read relatively well, generally speaking. And you've, you've but gotten better. I have. I have. Look at him. He's stretching out. I think he even maybe is he on? You know his mouth's closed. Maybe we want Mexican food tonight. <laughs> I think baby wants Mexican. No, mommy wants Mexican food tonight. See where he's at. So he's 19 